Hey guys, this is Chris Kermis and today I'm heading deeper into the Kurdish northwest of the country. Wow. To a city called Kermanshah. Kermanshah is the largest city in the region. It's around 1 million people and it's got a host of incredible attractions and wonderful historical sites like this. Come with me and let's explore this city in the northwest of the country. So we just stopped by the side of the road here to visit a nomadic tribe that we've been lucky enough to stumble across. They are the nomad of the Alishtar area and they are from, come from the Lord tribes. So how long do they stay in this one place here and uh, how do they move around the country? It's seven months they are staying in the southwest in the place which it is hot. Okay. And five months they are staying here because here, you know, in the winter here is so, is uh, so they are, in the summer they are coming here. It's a cool. But after that, you know, in one month here got cold and it is not possible for sheep to live here. So oh, okay. five months here in the west and uh, about uh, seven months in the south, southwest of Iraq. And so how are the sheep used? Are they used for meat? They use for the meat and also for the milk. For milk as well? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, for expensive. sheep's milk, okay. Yeah, for dairy products such as uh, milk, such as uh, yogurt, cheese, whey, which several ah, yes. times we try. It's sour, it's cheesy, it's kind of like gone off milk. Yes, yes, maybe not again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. You see here this very simple way of living, these simple tents, some solar power there to get electricity, but totally mobile to allow this nomadic lifestyle. How are the flocks transported? Is it all walking over land or any transport when the, the tribe moves? So he said in the past uh, they were walking, but no, these days okay. with the lorry that they transfer they oh, the from the ships from here to the south. He just kicked you in the face. <laughs> Oh, look at this guy, so cute. <laughs> Hello. That's just absolutely magical, just meeting this nomadic tribe here and seeing the animals, seeing the way of life. Fantastic. Now we're going to head back on our way towards Kermanshah, but we're going to see a real nice sight on the way. I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get there. So I've arrived now at the ancient site of Bissetun. But Bistan wasn't always called that. It used to be called Bogostan, meaning place of God. And this has been a small city since around 500 BC. It was originally started by Darius the Great due to its position on the road to Iraq and Babylon and also on the Silk Road. Nowadays, it's known for its incredible bas reliefs. There's around 20 something here and several of them at least are on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The most famous of the bas reliefs is a relief of Darius the Great himself. But it's not just bas reliefs from the Achaemenid dynasty that we find here. There's a lot more history here from other dynastic periods of Iran. What you see behind me is actually a carving of Hercules. So this was from the Greek dynasty which reigned after Alexander the Great burned Persepolis. And it seems the history here stretches back even further. This little cave that we're by right now, this is probably around a million years old, used since Neanderthal times. Now let's head into the city of Kermanshah itself and have a look around there. I know about the first sight to see in Kermanshah, so this is Taki Bustan. And this is really just on the outskirts of town, so just coming into town here, but this is known for its incredible bas reliefs. And in this first bas relief that you see behind me, we see a very familiar scene actually. We've seen this before. So this is the coronation of one of the Sassanid kings. And you see him being given the ring of power by Ahura Mazda, the god of Zoroastrianism. But there's one difference here. You also see behind him, Ahanita, the divine of water, also giving support to him. And in the smaller one behind me, actually titled the Smaller Grotto, we see a relief of the meeting of two Sassanian kings. And here in this last one behind me, we see a familiar scene yet again. It's another Sassanid king, 
Also being given the ring of power by Ahura Mazda, the god of the Zoroastrian religion. But the difference here is we actually see also the god of Mitraism, Mitra, which was the religion before Zoroastrianism. That's a wonderful sight there. You really get to see the detailing of the bas reliefs completely close up in quite a small space. Really, really nice. We're going to continue our journey now, going to head into the center and see if we can have a look at the major mosque of the city. And this beautiful building is the Shafi Mosque. You see a very different styling here to the Iranian mosques that we've seen before because the population around here are predominantly Sunni Muslim as opposed to Shia. And the styling of this mosque is more based on the Turkish style than the typical Iranian style. Unfortunately, it's not open for public to visit, so we can't really see the inside properly other than just a quick look through the glass door. So I'm just walking around the old bazaar area now. It's all very, very much closed up. Very, very different vibe here than uh, what we see in other cities. Very, very different feel here. Also very limited to how much I can film here as well, so we probably won't see so much of the city. We're going to a bathhouse now, which supposedly a local man here has the keys to and he can show us around there. So let's certainly take a look. This is the main room of the baths here, with a swimming pool off to the side and then the little archway that you see in the middle behind me is the water reservoir. So this is where the main cleaning would happen. Oh, this is lovely. He invited us up to the rooftop here. You see all the domes on the roof, similar to the bathhouse in Kashan and then the spires of the mosque behind, and we look out over the Jama Mosque further away. And we can see here over the city to the mountains in the background, just about through here, past the mosque. It's kind of weird, all the domes on top of the bathhouse, it looks kind of alien and strange, with the glass bits coming out like eyes. Really, really strange. So this is closed at the moment, but this, it looks like a mosque or a shrine, but it's actually neither. This is still a holy place, but it's used for ceremonies, sometimes the old fashioned theater. What was the name of this razor? Techie Mo'aven al Mulk. Okay, okay. So what is this? This is a so, local sweet from yeah, the area? Yeah, the souvenir or the local sweet of Kermansha, which is famous as the Nan Berenji. Nan Berenji, Nan, as you know that, the word of Nan, it means bread, and the word of the branch, it means rice. But what is included the ingredients is uh, flour of rice, oil, sugar, butter, cardamom, and rose butter. Oh, okay. Would you like to try? Of course. Yeah, please. Thank you. All right. Mmm. Wow. Wow, it, it just melts in your mouth. It just falls apart, like, like icing sugar. Mmm. Wow, that's delicious. It's like sugar with this hint of rose water that just melts away into nothing. And one more sweet of Kermansha. Oh yeah? So this is non khormai. It means, as the same as that one, non, it means bread. Khormai is date. Oh, okay. So this is, a, this is a sweet of Kermansha, which include of this one, there is the date. Oh, like a date inside. Khamilisha or the gandu. The flower of wheat, wheat date, sugar, water, and oil. Okay. Yeah. And let's rest. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's give this a try. Mm. Oh, lovely. Lovely and fruity from the date there. Not overly sweet like the last one I tried. Just a nice sweetness. Mmm. Oh wow, yeah. This beautiful, rich, old, dark fruitiness to it. Lovely, lovely. And this is how they prepare the Namarenji, the local sweet from here. So we're gonna head back to the hotel now. It's a little early. Would have liked to have seen more of the city, but there could be some danger to staying around here now. We've heard from local people. So we're gonna head back to the hotel, put this camera away and get out of the center here now. So I'm back in the hotel grounds now, which is really quite nice here. Nice and chilled. They've got an outside area here too, which I'm sat outside now. 
But we had to leave the city centre earlier. We were hearing from locals that there were some protests last night and this morning, that around the bazaar people had just shut up shop, which is why everything was closed today, because people just didn't know what was happening, whether all the shopkeepers were just going to stay closed and whether there'd be more protests. So we just basically left there. We, I didn't consider it safe. I don't want to be around that sort of trouble while I'm here. So we left there and just came out of the city. We've just come out nearby to a place called Bisha. This is supposed to have really, really good dande kebab. And what dande kebab is, is lamb ribs. So the ribs on this have been broken off the actual bones, leaving just the meat around. I've been taught by the master chef here, yeah. real barbecue. Glad to be of help. <laughs> okay, I think I'll hand it back to the master now before I ruin my dinner. Thank you for Well, that's been a strange old day, really, but there's worse places to end up than right here, in this rather chilled little courtyard, laying down in this kind of Iranian style, waiting for some nice, nice local barbecue ribs to come along. Okay, so the ribs have arrived. Would you look at that? That is quite a lot of meat right there. Okay, well, just gonna give this a try like this. Mmm, oh, got some nice, nice barbecue flavor right there. Super meaty, nice char from the natural, the natural grill there. That's got some great flavor. A real, uh, a nice fattiness as well without being chunks of fat. Just fat just dissolves into the meat. Nice flavor. Mmm. So with that rather strange day and short video, I'm going to wish you guys farewell. I hope you enjoyed it for what it is. If you did, don't be shy with that thumbs up button. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And please subscribe if you haven't already. There's still plenty more content coming. Tomorrow I'll be off to Hamadan, the final stop before I'm back to Tehran. Loop complete. Hope to see you next time, guys.